Okay, so I already kind of actually showed you how to copy and paste the data, but just to make sure um, that you know how to copy and paste the data, I'm going to do one more cart. So for cart number three, I'm going to scroll down. You see it switches from two to three. We're going to highlight that. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to go to my sheet for cart number three, which is now empty. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste that. And then once again, I can highlight all of my columns and find that double-sided arrow, double-click that, and it's going to auto-fit. So now that we've done this, um, we actually need to talk about the process of reassigning. So you won't reassign on this first sheet. This is like, it's got every Chromebook in your, every cart at your site. Instead, you're going to reassign within the individual cart sheets. So let's say um, right here, uh, Grover Cleveland, for whatever reason, uh, transferred out of your school. And um, we now have a new student that's come in that needs a, um, a Chromebook. And so uh, this Chromebook right here, cart one, uh, Chromebook number five, and here's the serial number. This is the one we need to reassign. So let's say, you know, almost as soon as we came back on the 15th, um, I needed to actually reassign this. The reason reassign is that we had a we had a drop and then we had an add. And then you would put in the new student ID, and then you would put in, you know, a first name and a last name, and um, as simple as that, now you have a record. And remember, because you're working in Google Sheets, it auto-saves. So you don't have to worry about hitting save to save to save this information. This is just auto-saved in here. And you'll do the same thing, you know, if in cart three, number 15, um, for that specific uh, cart needs to be reassigned, you would go through the exact same process. I do want to show you, because there's something a little bit extra for a, um, a uh, Google Sheet, uh, with an Excel document, obviously, if you wanted to share it with somebody per se, you would save it and you would share, uh, send that file to them. However, with Google Sheets, there's a little bit of an extra capability where you can share um, and actually have more than one editor of the sheet. So let's say that you have a school technology um, facilitator or coordinator on site that handles most of this, although you may also have a librarian on site that does part of this, or you may have an administrator on site that also does this from time to time. And let's say the librarian's absent one day and the administrator actually needs to do this. And so using this as a Google Sheet is actually a great idea because you can share it between those three people and all three will have have editing rights and we'll be able to edit the same document and it'll auto save rather than having individual copies of it and they've got to find that document blah 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 so I'm gonna hit the share button over here in the right hand corner and I'm going to you have two different options you can get a shareable link um, or you can uh, enter people's uh, email addresses specifically if you do the shareable link, you would copy and paste this into an email and send it to those three people. So really, either way, you're kind of doing it email. Just be careful because if, for both of these options, there's a pull-down menu. The pull-down menu for the shareable link is here. The pull-down menu for sending them a direct email is here. And there's always three options. It's they can edit, they can comment, or they can view. If you send it to them just a view, all they can do is look at this. They can open it and look at it, but they cannot change anything about it. Um, comment will allow them to add comments, but they won't actually be able to edit the document. If you're actually sharing editing rights so that more than one per person on your campus can reassign um, Chromebooks, then you need to choose Can Edit. And again, the list of people who should have editing rights to this document should be a very short list on your site. Um, it should be whoever manages your inventory or whoever is the lead on your um, Chromebook rollout or maybe a couple of administrators, but that's it. Um, so just make sure that when you send out this link or send the email that you make sure you choose Can Edit. And once you do that, you copy paste that link or you send in the emails, you say done, that person will receive an email notifying them that they have access to this document, editing access to this document. And when they go to their Google Drive and they click on shared with me, that file will actually be in their shared with me file, not 
like the owner of the document, it'll be in your drive, but those that you share with, it'll be in their shared with me file. Also, you're going to want to be aware that when you share that file with them, they're going to receive an email notification letting them know that you have shared this file with them. And in their email, it's going to ask them, you know, do you want to view this or, hey, this person has uh, sent this to you. If they click from the email to access the file and they get um, an error message saying that they have to ask for permission, they don't have to ask for permission. You've already given to them. The reason that they can't access it is because they're not logged into their Google Google account issued to them by EBR because these files are protected within our domain. It's only going to let you access them if you're logged in and that protects our students from um, anybody getting their information um, and in any way being to access that. So if you go to log into this file um, via your email notification and you get some sort of strange message telling you to ask the owner of the document for permission, just know it's, it's not that you need to ask them, it's that you need to go into Chrome, log in, and then access that email, and then it'll be able to open for you.